All right, so I'm going to be doing completing the square with complex numbers. Uh, let's just solve a question straight away. Solve z squared minus 6z plus 25 equals 0. Uh, now, to complete the square, it's a pretty straightforward process. z squared minus 6z. And now I take this number here, I halve it, and I square it, and then I add and subtract it. Half, square, add, subtract. So it looks like this. Halving negative 6 is negative 3. Squaring that is positive 9. So I'm going to add 9, and I'm going to subtract 9. And then that positive 25 can stay there. Now, why on earth would we do this? Well, because that now creates this scenario, and that is a perfect square. So now we can say that um, z minus 3 squared. You can test that. You can expand that and you'll get z squared minus 6z plus 9. Uh, and then this section here, minus 9 plus uh, 25 makes uh, 16. All right, now why did we do that? Because now we can solve from here. So now I can say that z minus 3 squared minus 16 I can say z minus 3 is the square root of negative 16, uh, uh, plus or minus. I can say that z minus 3, um, that's going to be plus or minus 4i, and z equals negative 3, moving over this side, positive 3, 3 plus or minus 4i. Now you'll see conflicting opinions on how you should do completing the square. Uh, some people take that 25 over to the other side and they don't sort of add and subtract the 9 like I did. They'll add the 9 to both sides. Um, it's an okay method. This one is more flexible because I can work on one side. That's useful when you're doing things like proofs and things like that. It's also useful uh, sometimes when you're manipulating equations of square, um, of circles or ellipses or, or things like that. I think this is a more powerful technique, although it is a little bit harder to wrap your head around that plus or minus, plus and minus in the middle of the equation rather than on both sides. So I'm going to complete the square here. I'm going to factorize. You can see there's no equal sign here at all. It's just an expression. All right, so we're going to factorize it. Uh, Z squared plus z, we're going to halve and square the, the b value, so half is, um, half of 1 is a half, and square it, which is going to be a quarter, uh, and then I'm going to subtract that same thing, and add 3 to it, oopsie, so from here, uh, we've got a perfect square right there, um, plus one half squared. You can see we just, we're taking whatever it was that we squared originally, and that's what goes in the bracket. You can expand it to test it, but that's what we're going to get. Um, minus a half squared, a half squared, let's just do it, um, is a quarter plus three. All right, so z plus one half squared uh, minus, that's going to be like 11 over four, but positive. Okay, so it kind of feels like we stall out at this point. It's a bit tough to see, like, how are we going to factorize this? Well, we can use a really, a really cool trick here. So we can say z plus one half squared, and then I'm going to take, um, well, I'm going to take the 11 over 4, and I'm going to multiply it by i squared. Now, think of what i squared is. i squared is negative 1. Um, so if I'm multiplying 11 over 4 by negative 1, I'm going to have to take that positive and turn it into a negative. Now, this line is equal to this line because 11 over 4 times negative 1 times negative 1 is 11 over 4. So why, why on earth have I done this? Well, let's take a look at what we can do in another line here. Um, minus, uh, let's put 11 over 4 and i and a square root square. What, what, okay, 
So we take our 11 over 4, we put it in a square root. We take our i, we put it just there, and we square the lot. If we then were to expand that, we'd end up back where we started again. But why have we done that? We have a difference of two squares. We have z, we have z plus a half squared minus all of this squared, and we can put it into a difference of two squares. So it's going to be z plus one half um, plus root 11 on 4i. Now, I've just changed root 11 on 4 to root 11 on 2. That's just nicer and neater. You can see that that root 4 is going to pop out. Um, and then we have z plus 1 half, which is this bit here, minus root 11 on 2i. All right, so it's a tricky, tricky deal. But that's sort of where we where we end up. We have a nice, neat factor, or a factorized, you might argue with me whether it's neat, a factorized version of z squared plus z plus 3. We have z plus a half plus root 11 on 2i, z plus a half minus root 11 on 2i. Uh, now, you can solve this if it was an equation. It's not an equation. But if it was an equation, you could solve it if it was 0 equals all of that you can then apply your null factor law and you'll get some complex solutions out of this as well. Now, if you thought that was rough, this one's going to be a little trickier. Um, it's this 2 out the front that makes all the difference. So, well, let's get rid of that. So, we bring this 2 out the front. We get z squared minus a half z plus one half. And then we sort of just, the two just kind of hangs out there and where we do everything inside the brackets. Okay, so we're going to be completing the square. So it's going to be, let's, let's keep the, the two pen thing going. Two, uh, z squared minus half z plus half of that is a quarter um, squared minus Oh, it should put a negative in there, but that go, sort of goes away. Minus one quarter squared plus one half. And I was trying to keep that two ink thing going. That's the plus and minus bit that we're doing there. All right, so now we have this bit here is the difference of two squares. And this bit here is the rest of it. So we get... 2 out the front, uh, z, um, this is going to be minus 1 quarter squared, and then it's going to be 1 half minus uh, 1 sixteenth. So, or we can just say minus 1 sixteenth plus 1 half. Um, okay. So, whatever that is, that ends up being um, positive 7 sixteenths. Uh, and now we can keep what we had out here. Z minus 1 quarter uh, oh, squared. Oh. Alright, and we're in the similar issue before where we kind of get stuck, but there's this plus here. If we can get rid of that and make this into a square, uh, we can do like a difference of two squares. So we can say 2 z minus 1 quarter uh, squared uh, minus uh, root 7 on 16 i um, squared. Um, that looks pretty good, I think. So i squared would be negative 1. That would be 7 on 16. Uh, and that negative would become a positive because I've got that negative 1 there. Now I have a difference of two squares. I forgot the last bracket from the from the two there. So this is a difference of two squares. So two, open a bracket. It's going to be z minus one quarter plus um, 
root 7 on 4 i um, bracket z minus 1 quarter minus root 7 on 4 i all right and now we have it fully factorized we've gone from 2z squared minus z plus 1 to this monster good luck <laughs>